How safe are we when we step into a ride-sharing vehicle? What happened in Kalamazoo County, Michigan, on February 20th, 2016, raises this question. On this fateful winter day, an ordinary Uber driver named Jason Dalton embarked on a shift that would end in terror. Dalton was not new to the ride-sharing world. He was an experienced driver known for his reliability. But on this day, his behavior was far from usual. It all began with his first passenger of the day, a man named Matt Mellon. Matt Mellon, like many of us, hailed an Uber for a quick ride, not knowing he was stepping into a vehicle driven by a man on the verge of a horrifying rampage. As the ride progressed, Mellon noticed Dalton's increasingly erratic driving, his unfocused gaze, and his disjointed speech. It was as if Dalton was a completely different person, a chilling shadow of his former self. The ride that should have been smooth and uneventful turned into a harrowing journey that left Mellon fearing for his life. Dalton's reckless driving, his sudden swerves, and his disregard for traffic rules were alarming. Mellon, sensing the imminent danger, made the crucial decision to alert the authorities. He dialed 911, his voice trembling as he reported his Uber driver's strange behavior. He described Dalton as erratic and dangerous, a man who was not in control of his actions. Mellon's call to 911 was a desperate plea for help, a stark warning of the danger that was about to unfold. But Dalton, oblivious to the panic he had induced, shrugged off the concerns. He continued to accept Uber requests, his mind seemingly set on a sinister plan. Little did his subsequent passengers know that they were stepping into a ride of fear, a journey that would end in a nightmare. Dalton, ignoring the alarm raised by Mellon, continued to accept Uber requests, setting the stage for a horrifying sequence of events. What started as a regular day soon turned into a nightmare for the residents of Kalamazoo County. Jason Brian Dalton, an Uber driver, had begun his day like any other, picking up passengers and taking them to their destinations. However, on this fateful day in February, Dalton's usual routine quickly spiraled into a terrifying spree of violence. His first stop was an apartment complex. Here, Dalton's Uber request was botched, causing a flurry of confusion. Amidst this chaos, he committed his first act of violence. A woman, caught in the crossfire, was shot. Miraculously, she survived the encounter a lone beacon of hope amidst the darkness that was about to descend on Kalamazoo County, but this was just the beginning. Dalton, undeterred by the chaos he had just caused, continued his deadly journey. His next destination was a Kia dealership. Here, he committed his next gruesome act. Two individuals unsuspecting of the horror that was about to unfold became Dalton's next victims. These people were just going about their day, unaware that their paths would cross with a man on a murderous spree. They had no reason to suspect that their lives would be cut short in such a brutal and senseless manner. Dalton was indiscriminate in his violence, his motives as mysterious as they were chilling. His actions that day have left a scar on the community, a grim reminder of the fragility of life and the suddenness with which it can be taken away. The dealership was left in a state of shock and terror. But even as the news of the shootings began to spread, Dalton had already moved on, his thirst for violence far from quenched. Two individuals lost their lives at the dealership, but Dalton was far from finished. The evening took a darker turn when Dalton arrived at a Cracker Barrel restaurant. Amid the laughter and clinking of cutlery, nobody could have anticipated the terror about to unfold. Dalton, the unsuspecting Uber driver, was now a cold-blooded predator, his eyes set on innocent victims. In the midst of the bustling restaurant, he opened fire. The unsuspecting diners were plunged into a nightmare, their peaceful evening shattered by the echo of gunshots. Four people were ruthlessly gunned down, their lives abruptly ended in a place of comfort and joy. The victims were a diverse group, each with their own unique stories. There was a young mother, her life centered around her children, a retired teacher who had dedicated her life to shaping young minds, a hard-working daycare worker, and a retired employee of the Kellogg Company who had spent years contributing to a company so many of us know and love. The chaos was unimaginable. People screamed and ducked for cover, the chilling sound of gunfire ringing in their ears. The smell of gunpowder mixed with the aroma of home-cooked meals, a haunting reminder of the abrupt transition from an ordinary evening to a scene of horror. Dalton's actions were not just an attack on individuals, but an attack on the community itself. A place of warmth and hospitality was transformed into a crime scene its name forever linked with a dreadful act of violence. In those moments, time seemed to stand still. The terror, the confusion, the heartbreak, 
all captured in the haunting memory of that dreadful evening at the Cracker Barrel restaurant. Four people lost their lives, their dreams and futures stolen in a senseless act of violence. Four more lives were taken but, Dalton's spree was not over yet. As the sirens began to wail in the distance Dalton slipped away into the night leaving behind a scene of devastation. The Cracker Barrel carnage was a grim reminder of the fragility of life and the destructive power of a single individual driven by inexplicable malice. Despite the chaos and the manhunt, Dalton continued to blend in, accepting more Uber requests. After leaving the Cracker Barrel restaurant, Dalton returned home. The night was far from over, and the city was far from safe. He switched handguns, readying himself for whatever came next. He was a wolf in sheep's clothing, hiding in plain sight, hiding behind the anonymity of his job. Dalton was not done. He kept accepting Uber requests, continuing his macabre dance as if nothing had happened. It was an eerie display of normalcy amidst the horror that had just unfolded. His next stop was the Western Michigan University campus, where he picked up passengers unsuspecting of the terror that had been unleashed by their driver. Meanwhile, the city was in chaos. The police were on high alert, launching a manhunt for the Uber driver turned gunman. Reports of gunfire were coming in from all over the city, adding to the confusion and fear. Each report was meticulously investigated, each lead followed, but they were all false alarms. The real threat was still at large, still hiding behind the wheel of his Uber. Dalton was eventually cornered. The police apprehended him, finally bringing an end to the nightmare that had gripped Kalamazoo County. But the arrest did not erase the terror, the shock, or the grief. The city was left scarred, its people traumatized by the events that had transpired. In the end Dalton was apprehended but not before he had left an indelible mark of terror on Kalamazoo County. The Kalamazoo shootings resulted in a tragic loss of life and left a community reeling. The victims, a diverse cross-section of society, included a young mother, a father and his son's girlfriend, a married couple, a retired teacher, a daycare worker, and a retired employee of Kellogg Company. Their loss still echoes through the community. One survivor, a 14-year-old girl, displayed incredible resilience. After multiple surgeries and two years of treatment and rehabilitation, she returned to school, a testament to the human spirit's capacity to heal and recover. The perpetrator, Jason Dalton, an Uber driver, was sentenced to life without parole. His actions that day raised hard questions about the safety of ride-sharing services. The tragedy highlighted the need for more stringent background checks and safety measures to protect passengers. It was a wake-up call that reverberated through the industry and sparked a much-needed conversation about safety and accountability. While justice was served, the Kalamazoo shootings serve as a stark reminder of the safety concerns surrounding ride-sharing services.